Hi, I'm Bart Hansen. I'm the owner and operator of CrushLivePoker.com. The following hand comes from our call-in show that we record at 4.45 p.m. Pacific time every Monday. If you want to call in your hand, check out the phone number in the description. Yeah, so um, I am under the gun, mm-hmm. and I raised to 20, which is pretty much my standard open at uh, ace 5 of space. Right. Uh, three callers. Mm-hmm. Um, and the main villain is uh, two to my left. So he's sort of in middle position. Okay. Um, and then uh, two other play, uh, players call, but they're not really um, involved. I am 1,500 effective with the villain. So you open to 20, he calls next to act, and then like there's maybe one call and one call in the blind or something like that? Yeah. Okay. He's, he's two to my left. So okay. I, he would be like MP1. Right, um, right. He's, he's looser um, than like a regular player. He's also just plays funny. <laughs> I mean, it's hard to sort of categorize the guy. But um, anyways, um, so we go uh, to the flop. Mm-hmm. And the flop comes out uh, queen of spades, three of uh, probably hearts or something, yep. and two of spades. Okay. So I I flop a uh, gutter and the nut flush draw. Right. So queen three deuce two spades. You have ace five of spades here, right? Yep. Um, so yep. pretty big flop for you, and you've got probably you're probably out of the position of two people, but uh, I assume it gets checked to you. Yes. So it checked me. Uh-huh. I bet uh, forty five in the eighty. Yep. Um. The uh, uh, the villain called. Um, and, uh, the fourth player, he folds. So I get two calls, the guy who's right next to me, and then the villain calls. So, so, so the uh, guy, the guy, was... so the guy that was right now, na- you mean the right guy that right to your right or to your left? So the, there was only one player that was in the blind and then two players on my left, my direct left that okay. were both called the, uh, the guy that was to my direct left, very, very loose. Um, um, aggro fish, um, okay. but he ends up folding, but um, on the next street. But, okay. Uh, so two callers at forty-five dollars each. Uh-huh. The turn is the three of clubs, and I decided that because my hand is just so strong, and the three is just really, really unlikely to hit anybody, uh, that I decided to go ahead and uh, bet again. Okay. Especially with my image, you uh-huh. know, I tend people tend to give me a lot of credit. So, in this case, I bet one twenty. One twenty into a pot of I'm calculating somewhere around like like one one eighty five, maybe two hundred or something like that, right? Yeah. So it was eighty dollars pre flop, and right. then about one hundred and fifty. So um, it's a little bit uh, about half pot, basically. Again. Okay. So let me just stop you real quick here, just to, to make sure that we're. So you know, you open Ace Five of Spades under the gun. You get three callers. It seems like someone called to your left. Villain over calls the race. Somebody in the blind calls. The villain's an MP1. Queen three deuce with two spades. You have ace five of spades. Good flop for you, obviously. You bet 45 into what is 80. And you get two calls. So, um, yeah, pot's like 215. Turn now is the three of clubs. The way that we have it up here is that the three is not a spade, so it's I guess it's possible someone could have three X of spades, but of course you have the spade, the ace of spades in your hand, so someone can't have ace three of spades. It's funny that because somebody's asking me about the Berkey hand against Nick. I'm actually going to go over that hand on the podcast, which they just put up on Live of the Bike where Nick folded aces, and it sort of has to do with looking at the suit sometimes of specific aces, but somebody can't have ace three. You bet 120 here, which is half the size of the pot. And I agree with you that a three is probably not in these guys' ranges. I actually might lean just towards more of a bet because, um, you know, I, I think that, you know, we talk about sometimes how you can you can sometimes make large bets with hands with a lot of equity as over bets. And, you know, if you're going to use somewhat small sizing on the flop, you can really do a lot of pounding on the turn. The thing is, is that, Wendy, from what you were saying about, like, your image, I feel like... If you like bet 200 or 220 on the turn, like full pot or somewhere between two and 300, somebody might fold like king, queen or queen, jack to you. But if you bet 120, 
they may not. I mean, that's just sort of my thinking. Now, that's not the reason why you called in the hand. So you bet 120, the guy to your left folds, and now what happens? Uh, now the villain actually min raises me to 240. So you bet 120. This guy is sort of clueless, right? That's sort of how you said him, right, in his description? Um, yeah, I sort of describe him as clueless. I don't really necessarily think he's clueless, but I think he does things that he thinks are good plays, but they're not for the right reason. So they they don't fit all the time. And uh-huh. so that's why there's like this disconnect between some things that he does. Right, so. right. And the thing here is, is that when I had first read this hand, to be perfectly honest with you, I thought that the guy could have sort of been making like a min click up here with a queen. So, but, but I think that's probably not likely, although you did use a half pot size bet. And what I'm talking about with a min click is, is that if any of you guys are ever in a situation where this situation is a little bit different, you make a turn bet with a draw and then somebody sort of min raises turn when nothing really comes in. That's a play some guys will make as a showdown raise. It's almost like a limit raise. Like they're going to freeze the action. Um, and they're just intending to check it back. And my first inclination here was, wow, you know, if you ever think this guy is doing this with a queen, is there any fold equity in basically bet three betting the turn here to try to get him off of that? You also have a massive amount of equity against um, just a queen. But that makes a lot of assumptions, right? Like that makes the assumption that the guy's going to raise fold. Uh, you know what I mean? Also makes the assumption that he yeah. doesn't just have a three, but when it, it's interesting, like what what other hands can he have here besides a queen? Like, what do you think he has when he min clicks here? What's his well, range? Well, actually, uh, you know, because he plays so weird sometimes. Mm. I mean, when someone makes such a small raise, it's right. like they want to be called, right? And it's, but they're also your normal average rec player is going to be worried about spades, uh-huh. so. You know, I was thinking that he could have three four spades. Um, that okay. would be very much in his range. Right. Um, three five of spades, I guess, a little bit where he might not really be that worried if he hits a flush. Mm-hmm. Uh, because I certainly don't look like I have a flush. I look like I have like ace queen, king queen, pocket kings, maybe even pocket aces. You know, that's basically what I think my hand looks like. So do you, was, let me ask you this question. Con- do, you, do you think that he's loose enough to overcall your flop bet with like a three, like king three of hearts or something like that? Yes. Okay. So so obviously like what kind of sticks out at me is when someone raises turn like this is that obviously he could have a three. Now I talked about he might be man clicking a queen. And then of course you look at deuces full. I sort of throw pocket queens out entirely, even though there's three combos because of pre-flop and because of the way that this is played. And this is sort of a little bit similar to deuces, but pocket queens is more extreme. In order, you know, you've got three total combos of pocket queens that are out there. In order for him to arrive with queens here, he has to play the line this way, which is a flat pre as an over flat, just a slow play on the flop, which could be, but then he's going to raise turn when you're still betting. I don't buy it. That's why I throw queens entirely out. Same thing with pocket threes. So then you look at, and now you look at deuces, and it's like, well, Deuce is, is he overcalling the flop on a dry heavy board when you, remember, you bet you got a call in between. He's next to act, and the guy in the blind is still in the hand on the flop. Am I right? Because he checked you, right, on the well, flop. He's not, he's not next to act. Remember, he's, he's, he overcalled the guy that was next to act. No, right, no, but, that's, that's my point. He overcalled, but I'm saying that on the flop, the guy in the blind is still there too, right? Right. Yeah. So so he'd yeah. have to slow play with a guy behind that's naturally checked to you, um, which is possible. But then he, a lot of guys that are like that won't raise the turn when they fill because they're slow playing. You know what I mean? Like it's right. just, yeah. so it sort of looks like a three a lot to me or Ming clicked here with a queen. And this is sort of where if you think that it's a spew or you don't think that there's fold equity with the queen, I feel like I would call, obviously, right? And then... I would lead the river here if I make it because I don't want to check and get a little cutesy with it and have a queen check back. Remember, now I'm saying that this guy either has a queen or he's got a lot of threes. And while maybe some threes will bet, they'll certainly call. So, and I don't want queens to check back. So, did you think right. about three betting the turn? 
No, I did not. Okay. I never thought about three betting, and nor did I think that he had a queen. And okay, well then that makes sense. That makes sense to not yeah. three bet. If you don't think he has a queen, so you just think he has a three or he's full, basically. I think he has a three. He's full or he's full of shit. <laughs> okay. okay. So I mean that was okay. kind of well. Then where... that ma- then it makes sense for you yeah. to call then. Then it makes sense for you to right. Call. Okay. Right. Right. So. And so I, yeah. So anyways, yeah. Um, I call. Yeah. And then the river comes the four of diamonds, the magical four of diamonds. Okay. Um, so you make so a wheel. I hit, I make a wheel. Yep. yep. Um, and again, I, my, my, at the, you know, in game, I really felt that he either had a three, he was full with like three, four mm-hmm. deuces, mm-hmm. Um, uh, or he had nothing. And I mean, like something really bizarre. Um, and to my surprise, he sort of like hesitated for about, uh, you know, 20 seconds or so. And then he had $400 in a rack and he just like, he just slid it in. So you checked, right? And, and again, like it, it, yes, your, your, the line of your thinking makes a whole lot of sense. Like I might think a little bit differently in your spot, but if you don't think he has a queen here, then the play is to call and then check the river, except maybe if there were spades out there, I feel like. Because uh, cause right. may, maybe spades you bet because you don't want a three to check behind. You know what I mean? Like right. depending and, and on how thin yes. thin the guy goes. But obviously if you hit your straight, yeah. then you're going to check. Now this is really interesting here because, again, I was like, well, when I had looked at this hand, I was like, well, I would bet the river. I don't want a queen to check behind. And I was like, well, if I checked and the guy bet 400, well, he certainly doesn't have a queen now. So you're right on his ra- – because, because you check and he bets 400, your range is more accurate than the one that I had thought of, I, I feel like, right, because of this $400 bet. He's not min-clicking a showdown with the queen and then betting 400 at the end, right, when checked to. So, um, so he bets 400 here. So the pot – so. He, 400 into a pot of almost like a full-size pot bat, 400 into 500, something like that? So it was, uh, God, I, I just should have added all of this up. I was doing this all in game time, but I was, uh, so my, it was about $250 when I bet 120. Right. So okay. it's, uh, it's 750, almost, uh, 400 into 750. 750. Right, yeah. right. And the guy's got what? The guy has about seven or 800 left. Some, if you guys we may start, have 15. just a tiny bit less than that, yeah. But we were just about fifteen hundred effective, and he was pretty much ready to go too, uh-huh. which was other another thought. He was um, a little upset about another hand, and so that's why his chips were in a rack. Was that he started to rack up all his chips, and so he had probably about five whites, and then and maybe like another or two right uh, uh still on the table i, I gotta and be honest I with you really i think torn, so. i think i think i'd probably check raise them all in here uh, i i do i think i think if he if he's remember if he's the type i don't know if you well, i don't know if you caught the call in show from last week when a guy just called with kings full on the river after sort of getting raised in a super polar spot but then he told me more about the villain and i was like well you know, if you were playing against a pro, maybe it's not a race here. It sounds to me like with that added information that the guy is sort of loose and he can have other threes besides three X of spades here. Like if you would overcall with king three, five three, what the other ace three, even ace three offsuit, um, that's consistent with this line. So I think that I do. And he's never bet folding the river. I mean, unless he's got air, right? But I'm saying that. The hands that he bet calls with, I still think that you're good more than 50% of the time. So I, I think I put this in, especially for another five or 600. What did you end up doing? Well, I, you know, this is probably where my run bad is probably influencing a little of my play. I, I, I did consider check raising all in, but uh-huh. I was just so petrified of doing that and getting snapped off with a full house that I went ahead and I just called. Yeah. And what do you have? Uh, King six of spades. Oh, so he had to air. Well, he missed, right? Yeah, so yeah. he and I both had flush draws, but he yeah. turned his hand into a bluff on the turn. Well, he semi, and... semi-bluffed, right? Semi-bluffed. Well, I don't know how you would consider it a semi-bluff. I guess from his point of view, maybe it was a semi-bluff. Well, he's um, he's got a draw, right? And he's trying to get you off the hand, right? King six of spades on queen three, deuce three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously, he doesn't know what I had. Right. He thought I called him with ace high, which wow. I did, but he didn't. He didn't even see that I made uh, a straight on the on the river. But uh, by the way, that's the. I, so I mean, obviously, if he makes that play, he can show up with five six of spades, which you beat now too. 
So he wasn't going to call, but I think the inflection point here, though, still is just that of the hands that he's going to bet call, I still think you're you're good more than 50% of the time. But, but thank you for the call, Winding. I appreciate it. Hey, guys, if you like what you've seen here, please click on the subscribe button, and you'll get notified every time we put up a new video. And if you want to check out CrushLivePoker.com for the first month free, use the code YTA200. Click on the link right there.